Hi, this is just a quick video to go over some common errors. I'm going to open up a file that a student sent to me, and this is for problem three of assignment one. And I want to show you a couple things that I typically see with a lot of students when they first get introduced to a program like SOLIDWORKS. So the part opens up. There aren't the four holes that are needed, but the basic shape looks correct and the material is copper. But I see right away, right in this location here, that there isn't a tangent point. You see that the two pieces here. So I know that that, if there's nothing else wrong, I can tell that that is going to be an error. I also suspect that maybe this isn't tangent up here either. Uh, the rest of the curves do look tangent. So let's go and take a look at it. So I'm going to open up the feature and go to the underlying sketch. I'm going to right click and click edit sketch. Now this is where the real issues begin because not one of the curves in this part is completely constrained. The origin of the system is here and there's no point, it's actually not even, there's no point touching that origin. And what's happening because of that, and due to some other issues here, let's say for instance I take this line, so I'm going to click on it, and now I'm going to drag it. Well, we can definitely see that there is not fully constrained op actions going on here, so there is some definite stuff missing over here. So let's fix up a couple things. All right, so first off, this line in the drawing, there's an implied constraint or an implied dimension that this line is on the same level or horizontal with these two circles. Now I suspect over here that if I pull this circle, all right, so not to, if that circle doesn't want to pull, that means that its size doesn't want to change. If I now drag its center, we get a lot of weird stuff happening here again. All right, so let's fix up a couple things here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select this line, and I'm going to hold down my control key, and I'm going to select this circle. I'm going to let go of my control key, and I'm going to make those coincidence. Okay, so the coincident constraint says that this line and that point are now horizontal with each other. I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to click this line, hold down my control key, and click this circle, and again make those coincidence. All right, so that's locked down some information. And now let me wander around all where all the tangencies should be. So that's a tangent. This is tangent. This one is as well. Same here, same here. I would expect two more up here. So we got those, and we got this one, but we're missing one here and here. So I'm going to click on this line, left click, hold my control key down, left click, let go, and select tangent. And then I'll do the same thing down here. Select the line, or the curve in that case, hold the control key down, select the line, let go of the control key, and go over here and select tangent. All right, so now some of this stuff might be locked down a little bit better. So let me take this circle now and pull it. All right, so now this is a lot better. It's moving along what I would want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose whatever point I want to be coincident with the origin. So I'm going to choose this point down here, it's the one that I would have chosen probably. So I'm just going to take this point. Well, I can do it two ways. I'll select this point, and I will select the origin. So I'll hit the Control key and select, and then I will make those coincident with each other. And now once I do that, you can see that everything is now fully defined. You get these ghosts options here because this is from the previous extrusion. So let me finish the sketch and this should rebuild the part. Now what I'm curious about is I don't know why the holes didn't show up in the first place. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this extrusion. It won't delete the underlying sketch. I'm just going to come up here and delete the, ext the extrusion. So now I'm going to go click on the sketch. I can go back and edit it. Made a mistake there. So I'll go back and so I'm back in editing the sketch and I'm going to go to features extruded boss and in this case see that's what you should have seen because as long as all these holes are or these circles are treated as individual islands if you want to call them that they should have shown up and you should have been able to do an extrusion just a single extrusion for the part so I don't forget what the thickness is supposed to be, but I'll just bring it to some thickness of 0.92. Well, let me put some distance in here. How about 0.9? And I'll say OK. All right, so I'm sure if the person who um, sent this to me goes ahead and makes those changes, I'm pretty sure they'll get the right answer. By the way, if, when your tangents are there, you'll see these lines and these are what are known as tangent edges. They're not really there. In other words, you wouldn't see them if the part was made. And then as a matter of fact, just as a quick addition, you can go up here under options, and when the options comes up, you can go to the display manager under system options, so you can go to display, and here it says part assembly tangent edge display. And you can, phantom edges is it sort of a dotted edge, and removed and when I click OK you'll see that they've gone away now gives it that more realistic look but from a modeling standpoint I tend to leave them on even though that's not something that you would typically dimension from or have a machinist uh, give you an exact measurement from because these are what they refer to as a blended edge in terms of a machined part so I'm going to go back and turn that back on so again, under options, under the system options, under display, I'll put them back as visible, and I'll say OK. All right, so hopefully this will have helped some of you. And keep the questions coming, and don't forget about the discussion board now. So I should keep my tagline. So this is Professor Sullivan signing off.